Welcome back, Restoration Referral System family. We are here today to talk about how to do a proper inspection and why that's important. So we are going to really dive into the details of this and, and also talk about the just overarching philosophy of why this is something that's important to you, why it's going to be helpful to you, why it's worth taking the time to do. So most every roofing company that I know of has some type of process. Hopefully you have something there. Um, I'm not here to tell you exactly how you have to do it. Uh, I'll share with you my way of doing it, why I do it the way I do it. Um, but the way that you do an inspection needs to be something that you believe in and that you understand why you're doing it. Otherwise, it's not going to happen consistently. So let's go ahead and dive into that topic here. When we get down to the tail end of this training, we're going to do some live questions. So please uh, go ahead and drop those questions into the comments, send them to us as a message, and we can address those here at the, the end of it. If you're in the Google Meet event here, you can drop those questions right here and, uh, and we'll address them right after this. So the, the first thing for us to talk about is, I think before we even get into how, we need to talk about why. Uh, as, a, as a roofing contractor in the insurance restoration world, you are going to be talking with your, your customer. You are going to be explaining that they have a need for a, a new roof. And I've seen a lot of guys that I'll show them, hey, here's two, three pictures. You saw the hail. Let's go ahead and do it. And that'll work some of the time. I've found that when you're able to, pre to prepare a really professional report and, and have everything all together, that just makes such an impact on your customer for them to trust this is really what's going on. Uh, that this person does know what they're talking about. They know what they're doing. They're professional, and I can trust them to handle this big business working on my house. So that, to me, is the, the first most important reason why we need to do a really good inspection. Aside from your customer, the adjuster is another reason. And some adjusters are great. They're going to go out and do a thorough inspection themselves. They're going to be fair about approving the claim. If you've been in insurance restoration for more than a day, you know that that's not always what ha is what happens. Sometimes they are not going to do a very good job. Sometimes they may inspect it very thoroughly, but they don't make a fair call in terms of what they're approving or paying for. And so it it falls back to you as the contractor, whether it should or not, that's a whole other discussion, but it does fall back to you. If you want to get paid and you want to get paid quickly, having a thorough and consistent inspection is going to help facilitate that. And so please, please, please do the work here. Uh, have a professional process and it really doesn't take that much longer it's just a matter of being intentional about the way that you go about it. And if you do that first, then actually conducting the inspection doesn't take that long. And it typically will save you a lot more time and a lot more stress on the backside. So, and, you know, you even if you take your stuff to a P, PA, for example, uh, PAs a lot of times can't get to your, your project immediately. And, and time can be critical. Um, they may have another storm. They may have their, their policy changes. Uh, they may, there's all sorts of things that could happen that, that makes it important that you do that inspection. Even if the PA is going to come out and do the exact same inspection, they're going to do a great job. It's worth it for you to do it for yourself. And, and the last reason, or I guess the last party that uh, that I, I want to talk about is the insurance agents that you're working with. So if this is a project for one of the insurance agents that is referring you business, 
uh, the project's for the homeowner policyholder, but if it was referred by this insurance agent, taking a very thorough inspection documentation and being able to provide transparency to that agent continues to build trust with them that you're doing the right thing, that you don't have anything to hide, that you're showing them all your cards because you're, you're in the right. Now, adjusters will very rarely ever do that. Um, bad roofers, people that are up to no good, will certainly not do that. And so you are enforcing, reinforcing that relationship. Now, if you, maybe you got this roof by some other means other than a referral from an insurance agent, having that thorough and consistent documentation that you can take to the agent to, at the onset, your first meeting with them, to, to show them who you are is critical in building trust. There, there's, you know, if you talk about being trustworthy, you talk about having integrity, you talk about doing the right thing, that's great, but it doesn't mean much because they don't know if you're actually telling the truth. And honestly, there's a decent chance that they've had, they've, they've gotten that line from roofers before and they couldn't trust them and they were up to no good. And so if you are going to conquer this relationship with an insurance agent, you are going to give them the confidence that they should be working with you over anybody else. You must really uh, be able to prove it. You, you must be able to volunteer transparency to them in a way that is compelling, is, is going to make them assume that they can trust you. And, you know, it even kind of casts a shadow of doubt onto your competitors without you having to say anything bad about it. So I know the title was how to do the inspection and why, uh, even though we're talking about this, why to do the inspection. And now let's talk about how. So you know why it's important. It's going to help you sell the deal. It's going to help you get it approved with the adjuster. And it's going to build trust with the insurance agent. Now, the how, um, there's a lot of different ways to skin this cat. Um, you know, primarily, um, you're going to want to document this with photos. And I think videos are nice. They're a nice supplement to have. But I want my photos to stand alone as well. And, and I want this to be done exactly the same way every single time. So it doesn't matter if it's a big house, a small house, an old house, a new house, lots of damage, no damage, somewhere in between. I can apply that same process. It's going to work for me every single time. I don't have to think about what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. Uh, and this is important. Even if you've been in the industry for a long time, you know exactly which photos are going to be relevant for you on this project versus another. That green pea that you hired that was a sandwich artist two weeks ago, he doesn't know. He doesn't know when the thickness of the shingle is going to be relevant. He doesn't know so many things, right? Uh, and if you expect them to take all the photos, to do all the things, because you don't want them out in the field making those decisions themselves, then you need to model that for them. And if you've got a team of people, everybody needs to be held to that same standard. So whether you've been doing it for 30 years and you're an expert, you've been doing it for 30 minutes and you're, you don't know which side of the roof is up, you, you need to be following that same process um, because I, I really believe as a sales team, as a company, you're only as strong as your weakest link. And so if you've got guys that are cutting corners, you've got uh, people that don't want to follow the process because they don't need it, they're hurting those people that do need the process uh, simply by, by not engaging, not, not making that part of their culture. So consistency is part of the how. Um, for me, I'll go ahead and walk you through step by step what I do when I do an inspection. I do some building consulting. 
Uh, I don't really sell roofs anymore. Um, but the, the building consulting needs to be done right. Um, there's, those are typically pretty large claims and a lot of them go to litigation and you don't want to be in a situation where you've cut corners on your inspection and now the insurance carrier is going to weasel their way out of the deal because you dropped the ball. You're, you're going to be done as a building, building consultant, uh, the first time you do that. So what I do, and we'll use a residential home as an example here. Uh, these things can be applied to, to the commercial side as well. Uh, but I start with a front elevation photo and what I call my real estate photo. If I was going to sell this house, what is the photo that I would take of the front of it? This, if it's, you know, kind of your cover photo of your report, this is going to show your homeowner right away. This is your house that we're talking about. And, and so that's kind of my establishing shot. And then I'm going to go to the front left of the house. Always the front left. Does it matter that it's front left? No, not really. But that's what I do. That's the process. So that's what I apply. So I go to the front left and I'm going to take my first photo of the front left section of the home, the elevation, and I'll get about a six to eight foot wide section in, in view of the camera. That's how far away I am. And if I see damage in that six to eight foot section, I'm going to get up real close. So maybe there's some screens that are damaged, some windows, some siding, whatever the case is. And I'm not worried about what type of damage it is. It could be damage from uh, their dog. Uh, it could be damage from hail. It could be damage from old age or whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm going to take photos of the, that damage. Now, if it is perfect and pristine in every way, I'm going to move to the next six to eight foot section that overlaps that first one by just a little bit. And I'm going to go, I'm going to my right. So I'm going counterclockwise around the home. And every time that I see some damage in that section, I'm going to get some close-ups and then I'll go do my next section. And I will systematically work my way counterclockwise around the home, taking photos of every piece of that as I go. And you can, and a lot of times, you know, you're going to end up with 50 to 80 photos of the exterior of a home. If it's a real big home, it could be over 100, just of the elevations. And you may be saying, hey, I'm a roofer. I don't like doing siding. I don't like doing windows. I don't like doing screens. I don't like doing paint. I just want to do the roof. Cool. Take the photos. And you can do this part pretty quickly. So I'm kind of zigzagging my way counterclockwise around the house. That part of the, the process is usually about five minutes, five to ten. And, and I'm going to have a really thorough look at what, what's on the, the property. Here's what, it, even if you are just that roof and gutters or just roof person, and you're working up on top of the roof and you've got photos of every elevation of their home, one, they may have damage that the insurance adjuster needs to be made aware of, even if you're not the one doing that work. But maybe they don't have damage. Maybe that part of their house is pristine and your install crew drops some shingles that damage the house. There was a gap in your, your protection, something there. Uh, and, and now you know, you know what, it, was, it wasn't damaged before. Now it is. That's definitely my fault. Or on the flip side of it, could be the opposite. Could be that it already had damage, that their dog tore their window screen, and then they never noticed it until you guys got done working at their house. And they're like, oh, you guys tore this. You, you need to replace that for me. And you know you didn't tear it. But if you don't have that photo, timestamped, geolocated, of before you did your work there, you're kind of on the hook for it anyway. And so these photos, you're, you're taking photos of everything because you don't know what is going to come up. You don't know what's going to happen. But if you've got photos of everything, it doesn't matter what comes up later. You're going to have documentation for it. So complete your, your lap around the house until you get back to that front left part of the house. 
then go ahead and climb your ladder, but don't get on the roof yet. This is, to me, this is when I do my gut check because I, for a long time, was the worst about skipping my top of ladder stuff. And, oh, I'll get it later. And then I would forget. I'd get in a hurry. I'd get a phone call. I'd get off to the next one. And I would forget those things. And you're only going to drive across town 45 minutes each way so many times before you realize, like, you know what? It would be a lot faster just to take a second and, and take those photos. So take your top of ladder photos next. What you're looking for here. And I know for some of you guys that have been doing this for a long time, this stuff is really obvious. If you haven't, or maybe you're working for a company that doesn't give you a ton of training on this piece of it, um, take down some notes on this. Make a, a process of this. So um, at your top of ladder, what you're looking for really is how is the roof constructed right now? So you're looking for how many layers are on the roof right now, what type of shingle there is. So you may need to put a shingle gauge on there to see how thick it is. You're going to want to look at what is the pitch of the roof. That may affect how the roof is paid. That may affect, you know, your telemetry may not have the right slope there. And, and so if you're confirming what the slope is uh, manually, that's going to tell you for sure. Look at what type of underlayment is present. Uh, look at what type of drip edge, if any, is there. Look at how your gutters are attached. That is something that uh, I can't tell you how many times I've had where they bought the roof for hail. They didn't buy the gutters, but the gutters were spiked through the drip edge. And so they ended up having to pay for a detach and reset. If you know anything about gutter pricing, that's going to get you pretty close to the price that it's going to take to completely replace the gutters. So, um, because detaching and resetting gutters is a joke, in my opinion. You're going to want to look at the decking. What type of decking is underneath this roof? If you can see. Sometimes you can't always see what's there. You're going to look at if there's ice and water shield at the eaves. And so all of the components. You want to see what is going on with this roof. How was this roof completed before? Is there starter present right now? Uh, most everywhere, that's going to be code anyway uh, to go back, but they may make it paid when incurred if it wasn't there initially. So if it is there, you want to know it. You want to make sure, hey, you need to pay for this up front because it was present. And, and one last thing on, on that top of ladder, so I'm going to take a measurement of how deep my soffits are. And... This is going to be relevant for you if you're in a market where ice and water is required at the eaves. A lot of places, ice and water is required at the eaves 24 inches past the interior of your that outside wall on a heated space. And so if you've got a, a roof that is pitched like this and you're measuring past your interior wall needs to go 24 inches this way well it's not going to go 24 inches for 24 inches here it's going to be kind of discounted right and so you can look up there are some uh some tables some um that will show you how many courses of ice and water that you need there um but if you don't know you don't have documentation showing how deep that soffit is it's tough to get that stuff paid for up front but if you can measure that soffit you can show them the show them the math of why uh, that's going to need two courses of ice and water. That can very easily be several hundred dollars that's added to your claim. Um, that is a pretty profitable several hundred dollars. Now, that's not you know a, a huge huge amount of money, but if you multiply that over dozens and dozens of claims, it, it ends up being a pretty big deal. So when you finish that eve inspection or top of ladder inspection, now 
you're allowed to get up on top of the roof. And I know this is, as a roofing contractor, this is what you're here for. You want to get up on the roof. You want to see if they've got hail. You want to see if they've got wind damage. You want to see if you're going to be selling a roof. And a lot of the collateral around the side of the house uh, and even the gutters and, and that type of stuff is probably going to start to tell that story for you beforehand. Here's why I don't rush to the roof. And, and I know a lot of guys will rush to the roof because they want to know, see what they've got. Because if they don't have damage, they're out. They're not selling a roof. I'm not going to take my time to take photos. I'm not going to take my time to do much of anything. I'm out of here. Stop it. You are shooting yourself in the foot. You are dealing with a customer right now that maybe they don't need a new roof right now. Maybe the roof is in great shape. But they just got a, you know, front row tickets to see the show of how you do an inspection. And they got to see how professional you are. They got to see that you do things the right way. You don't cut corners. And, and so now when they do need a roof, whether that's next week, next year, or next decade, they know you're the expert. Well, all these hooligans out here, they're going to take three photos and look at the roof and not really do much work. They don't want them working on it. They want the professional. And so the that's why it's important. That's why I don't skip ahead to the roof is because it doesn't matter whether there's damage or not. I'm still going to do that same inspection either way. Now, the roof is going to be the most relevant for us. For me, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to mark off my test squares. And there's different schools of thought on whether or not to do test squares, how many test squares to do. Um, I always do at least one test square. Sometimes I'll do two. Sometimes I'll do four. Um just depending on the situation. I usually don't do four unless it's like kind of like it's so so driven that like some of the sides might not get bought. Um, you know, they may only, you know, buy half the roof or something like that. I want to be able to prove, hey, all four sides of this do need to be paid for. Um, but a lot of times I'll just do one or I might do two, one on either side, one on either end of the house. And... Uh, I'll take those those test squares. I'll, I'll mark off the damage. I'll write how many how much hail damage there is, how much wind damage there is, and and I'll I'll go chalk all my vents that I'm gonna chalk, so I can see hey did hail hit these? Is there collateral damage to our accessories? Then I'll take my first photo on top of the roof. I'm going to take, I'm going to start with overview photos and, and really I want to document everything that's going on on the roof. I want, I want you to see, okay, this is where that test square is. I want you to see, okay, here's where the accessories are. My goal when I take those overviews is to have every square inch of that roof in some photo. And, you know, that may me, mean kind of walking along the ridge of the roof kind of taking your, your photos around. Um, and then I'll go to my test squares. And I'm going to take a, t a photo of that test square in such a way that I can see where the test square is. I want to get uh, some frame of reference. Because if you're looking at these photos and you are not at the, the house, you've never been to the house, you don't know where that is. So make sure you bear that in mind when you're taking that, that shot. Then take a photo of that test square again where you can make sure you can see the entire test square. And so you can see what the count is. You can see where the hits are within that, that test square. And then I want you to take at least four or five of the hits in that test square and take a photo. And if the sun and the lighting is kind of making it difficult to see where the, the hits are, you might take two photos of that same test square or that same hit. Um, you know, it'll be kind of obvious based on, you know, the, what that circle looks like, that it's the same one, but you can see that it's a little bit different angle. Um, you know, I'll probably be six to nine inches away from the, the shingle. So I'm pretty close, but if you get too close, it, uh, it's kind of tough for it to, um, to focus. 
but take all your photos of that test square. If you've done multiple test squares, rinse and repeat. Now go ahead and go over to your other one. Show where it's at. Take a photo of the whole thing. Take a photo of several of the hits within it. And, and do that for each of your test squares. Then, once I'm done with my test squares, I'll go to my accessories. And I'm going to take my tape measure out and I'll go around to all the, the pipe boots. I'll go around to all the vents. And I'm going to throw my tape measure on it. I'm not even looking at my tape measure. It doesn't matter right now. And take a photo. Take a photo. Take a photo. And what that is useful for is sometimes you're like, oh, yeah, I think we had this many pipe jacks and they were this size or whatever. Well, you can go back and look and you can zoom in and go, okay, yeah, you know what? That's a uh, two-inch pipe jack. Okay, cool. Now I know. Um, you don't necessarily need to worry about that while you're on the roof. Also take photos of any flashings. So head wall metal, um, step flashing, chimney flashing, counter flashing, um, flue caps, uh, you know, your furnace vents, all the, all the accessories, all the flashings, uh, and take photos of any problem areas. So maybe they've got a little low slope section that's not draining properly. Maybe they've got something that a raccoon's been scratching at. Maybe they've got something that's blown open, um, that's dried up, that's whatever type of issue. Take photos of those things on top of everything else that you've done. And now when you're done with this, you may be thinking, holy cow, that's a, a crazy inspection. It's probably 150, 200 photos in most cases. And if you're using something like company cam, you're using a lot of the more up-to-date CRMs will allow you to take fo one photo after another. It's not necessarily caching to your phone. It, it doesn't take that long for you to accomplish. Now you've got, as like we talked about when we started this, you've got something that is undeniable. Um, that you've documented that if an adjuster comes and says, well, no, we're not paying for this, you can, you can throw that in their face and say, hey, here's the documentation. Where's your documentation that is better than mine that says otherwise? And I, I know there's not a lot of – not everyone agrees with me on this point. But I think you need to be better at that adjuster's job than they are. And most adjusters are not great at their job, so it's not that hard. But if you can be better at their job than they are, then you've earned the right to be upset when they deny your claim. If you're expecting them to do the whole job and you are, you're that guy who jumps up there, takes four photos, tells the customer to file a claim, and hopes it all works out, it's kind of on you. I, I would say it's kind of your fault if that didn't get approved. Um, that's not really doing right by your by your client. I know if I were filing a claim on my my own roof or my grandmother's roof, I'm going to make sure that it's right. I'm going to make sure that that insurance adjuster is is held accountable to do the right thing because because I did my job. And so if you take that same philosophy and apply it to every one of your clients, you want to make sure your customers are taken care of that their insurance carrier doesn't pull one over on them because you took a shortcut. That's how you need to do it. Whether or not that should be your responsibility or not, doesn't matter. That's just the reality of it. So the, by the way, that that's my inspection process uh, that I do is, you know, it's, it's things that I've, I've borrowed and, and stolen uh, from adjusters, from other roofers, from uh, lots and lots of people uh, over the years, stuff that I've read, videos that I've watched. And it's kind of a culmination of all the things that I thought were important. You should do the same thing. Find what does that inspection look like for you. Um, you can use the process that I've, I've put together, steal it from me. I'm not selling it. Uh, go use that. Go have fun with it. Uh, I'd also recommend to anybody out there, uh, the National Claims Institute down in New Smyrna Beach, Florida, 
which we're doing our boot camp there. Uh, Matt Mulholland leads that. And they do courses on residential roof inspections, on low slope inspections. They do PA courses, engineering courses, like all sorts of different stuff. And so it, if this is your profession, this is your career, not just some job you're doing for the summer, I would highly, highly recommend that you invest into those things. They, their, their courses are super affordable. Um, you know, it's kind of a nice time away. If you're the owner of a company, really highly recommend send your people to that so that they can represent your company well. They're going to bring back knowledge that's going to help help you guys. It's going to make them feel more confident as a professional too in knowing that they're going to do the right thing and not getting taken advantage of by the insurance carrier uh, as often. So that's my little pitch for NCI. Uh, but really, go check them out. Um, NationalClaimsInstitute.com. Um, really cool stuff there. Like I said, June 8th, 9th, and 10th is when we are going to be doing our boot camp. So look forward to seeing some of you there. Um, we do still have some spots open for that. So if you're wanting to come, uh, reach out to me right away. We'll get you the information for it, get you signed up for that uh, and, and locked in while we still have some room. Uh, but that's going to be huge for the restoration referral system uh, training that we do. Um, so definitely take advantage of that. Now, I think we've covered the topic. I know I've been a little bit long-winded, but let's go ahead and we're going to move over uh, to, to my desk here um, so that we can handle some of the live questions. That is a client-exclusive experience that we do there. Uh, so if you are watching this and you're not a client of Restoration Referral System just yet, join us. Um, sign up for the program. This is kind of an ancillary thing that we do, talking about inspections. Uh, it, it comes into play in how we build trust with insurance agents, but that can be um, a huge value to you guys. So we're going to go ahead and move over uh, to answer those questions. If you're not a client yet, this is where the broadcast is going to end for you. We'll see you guys soon.